a system for administering and monitoring continuous positive airway pressure, CPAP, in anesthesia practice. Nasal CPAP is a well-proven treatment for the syndrome of obstructive sleep apnea, or OSA. There is a comparable condition encountered in anesthesia practice that we have termed the syndrome of narcogenic obstructive respiration, or SNORE. In both OSA and SNORE, the upper airway is obstructed by the relaxation and collapse of soft tissue structures into the oropharynx. Roughly 7% of the general population is susceptible to OSA. In OSA, sleep induces upper airway obstruction. This obstruction is spontaneously and intermittently relieved in a periodic breathing pattern cycled by local reflexes. In anesthetized patients, susceptibility to snore approaches 100% as the level of sedation approaches general anesthesia. Unlike OSA, the obstruction is drug-induced and the local reflexes are also depressed. There tends to be no spontaneous relief of obstruction and usually outside intervention is required to restore the patency of the airway. However, if upper airway patency is restored, then the patient will spontaneously breathe down to very deep levels of general anesthesia. Hypoventilation, hypoxia, and hypercarbia may ensue. Nevertheless, an inspired oxygen concentration of less than 30% will normalize oxygen saturation and permissive hypercarbia is well tolerated. The following devices are indicated to prevent airway obstruction, to optimize the functional residual capacity, and to regulate the delivery of oxygen in an anesthesia CPAP system. The nasovestibular airway, or NVA, is an interface device which seals to the nose of the patient and connects to ventilator tubing for the purpose of delivering nasal CPAP. It is especially indicated in facial surgery where it is self-retaining, requires no straps or tape, and is unobtrusive in the surgical field. The snore tracking and assist linkage, or snortle, configures the NVA with a non-vented connection to a standard anesthesia circuit and facilitates the precise monitoring and control of airway pressure, flow rate, and oxygen concentration. The snortle may be applied to an awake patient to spontaneously pre-oxygenate and denitrogenate the lungs as 100% oxygen forced through the nose pushes nitrogen out of the mouth. Then when anesthesia is induced, CPAP is established to keep the airway open and to allow spontaneous respiration. If the patient becomes apneic, the delivery of 100% oxygen above the vocal cords will provide for apneic diffusion oxygenation. This will keep the normal patient well oxygenated through many minutes of a difficult intubation. The snore CPAP assist linkage, or snorkel, configures the snortle with a vented connector to prevent the rebreathing of carbon dioxide. Attached to a CPAP machine, the snorkel is indicated for the delivery of CPAP. This arrangement can prevent obstruction upon extubation at the end of an inhalational anesthetic and will optimize gas exchange during transport to and through the recovery room. The snore pack is a lightweight battery pack and carriage assembly which powers an attached standard 12 volt CPAP machine. The snore pack is indicated for the continuous delivery of CPAP during transport of the patient. The snore scope is a stethoscope attached in line with the anesthesia circuit. Typically, the snore scope connects by a long length of standard stethoscope tubing to standard stethoscope earpieces. Alternatively, the tubing may be attached to a small battery operated speaker amplifier. The snore scope is indicated as a continuous monitor of gas flow in the circuit for the early detection of airway obstruction. This system of devices for administering and monitoring nasal CPAP is added to standard anesthesia and CPAP systems to provide practical alternative solutions to common airway management problems. An experienced anesthesiologist will recognize those areas in his own practice where there is room for improvement. As examples, consider the monitored anesthesia care, or MAC, that too often slips into deep sedation with the airway obstruction and hypoxia. The fire risk of delivering 100% oxygen by nasal cannula through or near the surgical field. The paradoxical nightmare of can't intubate, can't ventilate, resulting from intentionally depriving the patient of spontaneous respiration in order to establish an artificial airway. 
the need for a better way to support oxygenation and ventilation during fiber optic endoscopy, the need for a better way to monitor the respirations of high-risk MAC patients and to avoid the fire hazard of the oxygen-enriched environment that accompanies oxygen cannulas, the need to extubate the patient smoothly without bucking and coughing, and the need to prevent atelectasis in the immediate post-anesthesia period. In conclusion, an added degree of vigilance is required to use nasal CPAP in anesthesia practice. Nevertheless, the experienced anesthesiologist will find an area of his practice where nasal CPAP is a worthwhile alternative approach to airway management.